Alright, so now what I'm trying to do is figure out the sizes for the shelves that go inside the uh, watertight cylinders. And what I have to do is make space to fit two lipos in the base of this uh, central cylinder. So what I've worked out so far is that the distance between the top and the uh, and the height and the, and the top of the tray needs to be at least 40 um, millimeters and that I need 52 to hold the two lipos in there and these and I'm going to drop down two other pieces here which can be about 40 they don't really matter they're not going to be hitting the base of the watertight cylinder and clearly what I'm going to need to do is screw these ends in and I'll show you how that's going to happen now, if this is the uh, full width of the watertight cylinder, I can't run it the full length because I have to lift the lipo out. So I'm only going to take it in to 130. And the width to fit across is 90. So at the actual piece then I need to cut is 90 by 130 and then a smaller slot which is going to go into the end of the end cap and actually progress into the other cylinder. So let me show you that because I've been able to do this so far. So this is the piece that I've cut and this is going to slide into here. This of course gets screwed on to the end of this. This is uh, a good size because here is the... I'll show you this in a minute because first of all this has to go on which is the end cap for that end. It's fairly loose that one, I'm going to have to tighten it up. But this goes into here like so. I'm going to have another one sitting next to it. So all of that's pretty good and what I do need to do now is put a, a bracket on here so that I can screw that actually into this end cap and hold it firm. Then I'm going to put another piece of um, uh, acrylic onto here and put another piece through here which is going to come out a little bit further on here. I'm, I'm, I'm going to use every bit of space in here to hold electronics because I've got quite a bit, so it's all going to fit. Okay. Right, now I've just taken two pieces of acrylic, bent it with, my, with some heat, and I'm using this glue here just to glue it into place, and I'll leave that for a few hours. That'll be solid. So what I want to do now is test out the pistons and just look at how, what, the, what the clearance is and what it isn't. The interior of this is 3. Point, I've got up there 3.950, oh, that's not true, that's not true. The interior of this is 3.6, I'm going to get any more different than that, is actually 3.6. Nine eight. That's three point six nine eight inches. When I measured the external of the um, O-ring, I'm getting three point seven oh five. So this is giving ten thousandths of an inch interference, which I would think is almost perfect. So let's get this going. Hopefully I've got it around the right way to start with. Yep, there it goes. I'm in two minds whether this is fast enough or not. Okay, we're in now. And in my view, that's a good speed. It's certainly not going to leak too easily.
that stopping position. I can see it's pulling the um, O-ring because it's it needed. Yes, hold on. I think you need to um, apply this before it goes on, and then when it's in, you need to apply it as well because it wipes it all off. You need this to make it work happily, immediately better. Yeah. It's got a bit of a thing happening. Okay. I think that one's fine. All right, so I've got the This is the power circuit that I've drawn up. And I've got both the LiPo batteries going through a 35 amp fuse. And then uh, the voltage reducer, and then I've got a couple of um, relays in there. And then uh, powers up the Arduino and of course the receiver. Now, this uh, wire from the uh, LiPo, this is just one of them, um, runs about that long. Now what I do want to do is make a wire that I can connect that onto and I think it should run the full length up to there and double back. That gives me plenty of room when I pull it out. So that gives me an idea of how much length I need from here until I get to the male, um, the male connector. Okay, I've just put this together. You can see I've screwed these in here so that these are held really firmly because the pushing and pulling of getting the um, getting these uh, batteries on and off is not going to be helpful. So here we go, I'm just going to put one in. Oh that's it. Not sure what the issue was there, but something to do with my organization of myself. I'm going to curl that around and put that into place onto there. Make sure these wires are not anywhere near each other. Curl this around and put that place into place on there. And now we put together the whole thing, which will fit like that. And you can see, pretty happy with that. It's not an easy process, but once you've got them on, they curl around like that without any um, pressure on them at all. So that should be completely fine. So now I can move to stage two, which is putting the rest of the um, power system in place.